Hello, I showed you how to create a post in WordPress in the previous video. Now, I will guide you how to format and style text in the content editor. To do these, you can see the bottom area of the content editor that displays some useful information, left is the word count, and on the right is the last date and time the content was edited, with the name of the user who made the edits. The button bar is the heart of the content editor, providing all the tools for styling and formatting your content. You'll sometimes see it referred to as the toolbar, but because the area at the top of admin screens has that name, and the icons all act like little buttons, I prefer to say button bar. In visual mode it resembles a word processor, you see the default button bar, with each button labeled for reference. Now consider the second row of key buttons. On the right side of the first row there's the toolbar toggle button. Clicking this button reveals the second row of buttons, and they'll stay visible until you click the toolbar toggle again. Shows this second row of buttons with their functions. Now the content editor automatically scrolls no matter where you have your cursor and no matter how long the content. This is why you won't find any resizing option you don't need it. You can resize the content editor by clicking the distraction free writing button on the far right of the button bar, in visual or text mode. The idea is to get rid of any other boxes on the screen and let you focus on writing. For styling text, you can use the styling buttons on the button bar, such as bold or italic work as follows. Their toggle switches. That means if some text is in italics, clicking the italic button removes the italics, and vice versa. Highlight the text you want to work with and then click the button to apply the change. I'll demonstrate by working with some of the text in the first post for my website. I want to emphasize the name Kingston in the opening sentence and to italicize the name Bob Marley Museum. I simply highlight the text first and click the corresponding button, just like any word processor. If you prefer working with keyboard shortcuts, those all work in the content editor, too. For a complete list of shortcuts, click the question mark icon on the button bar. Please use bold button wisely. If you use too much bold text on a page, the purpose begins to get lost. Everything becomes important so nothing stands out. Like that. For underlying the text, select your text and click Ctrl plus U. However, in practice, I'm not a fan of using the underline function, at least not on the web. I think it's just too confusing to your visitors, because underline text spells link in their minds. They try clicking the underline text and you either disappoint or confuse them. If you need to emphasize text, it's usually best to stick to bold and italics, or perhaps color. For coloring text, remember a few things before you start using it. Don't use the same or a similar color as the one you use for your text links that's going to confuse visitors. If you have of text can also be confusing, though a shade of that color may be okay. You should always think about the background color behind the text. You want enough contrast with the background to keep the text readable. How, then, do you color text? It's the button with the letter A, on the second row of the button bar. If you highlight some text and click that button, the text turns the color of the small bar displayed at the base of the button. If you want to change that color, click the down arrow and you see some preset choices. Click more colors and you see a pop-up window where you can choose from any color. Formatting text is another way to help visitors read your content easily, and the button bar offers many formatting options. By formatting, I mean how text is structured, paragraphs, lists, groups of paragraphs separated by headings, alignment, left, center, or right, and indenting. You can find here four alignment buttons of left, center, and right alignment that are on the first row of the button bar, and justified alignment is on the second row. To use any one of them, Simply place your cursor in the paragraph you want to align, and click the appropriate button. You cannot align a single sentence within a paragraph. Also, 
you can use block quotes for distinguishing blocks of text from regular paragraphs, often with some nice styling. As the name suggests, the most common way to use block quotes is when quoting someone else. Keep in mind that the font styling you see here is based on the default 2014 theme. What you'd see would depend on your theme. One common styling is to indent the left side or even the right side as well. Applying block quotes works only on entire paragraphs. If you try to highlight just one sentence of a paragraph, clicking block quotes would format the entire paragraph. It follows from that, you need to place your cursor only somewhere in a paragraph to make it all a block quote. If you want to make more than one paragraph into a block quote, you need to highlight the entire group. Now, let's see one of the most effective ways to present information on the internet that is with the use of lists, because they O emphasize points by separating them visually. O allow the eye to scan through material quickly. O provide a roadmap when giving instructions or long explanations. O help readers remember points. WordPress makes it easy to create lists with bullets or with numbers, there's a button for each on the button bar. Creating a list is just a matter of selecting the entire group and clicking one of the list buttons. If you create your list in the content editor, begin by pressing return slash enter after the paragraph and before the point where you want to put in the list. Then click the button of the list type you want. A bullet or number appears, and you can begin writing the first list item. Press return slash enter at the end of the item, and another bullet or number appears. Repeat until you complete the list. When you finish, press return slash enter once. You see a bullet or a number, then press a second time. The bullet or number disappears, meaning the list is complete, and you're on a new line ready to start writing a new paragraph. If you have complex lists with sublevels, WordPress can handle that using the indent buttons in combination with the list function. To create a subitem, Press enter to start a new list item, and then press the increase indent button. The list item moves to the right, and for numbered lists, you see numbering begin again for the new level. For bulleted lists, the bullet for the new level may be the same or different, depending on your theme. The decrease indent button moves a list item to the left and returns the bullet or number to the type for that level of the list. You can see a new multi-level version of my food list in bulleted form on the left and using a numbered list on the right. The number of levels you can have is limited only by the width of your content area. The drop-down menu on the second row of the button bar is one of the most misunderstood and misused elements of the content editor. Following is a description of each of the formats in the order on the drop-down. Concerning the text paragraph, the default formatting when you enter text in the content editor is a paragraph. Even a single line of text followed by a return creates a paragraph in the technical sense of having HTML paragraph tags. About the only time you need to use the formatting drop-down for paragraphs is when you want to change some text back from some other format. Paragraphs by default are left aligned and their styling is controlled by the theme style sheets. Concerning the pre that is short for preformatted content, and the idea here is that the text in question has a particular spacing, and the job of this tag is to preserve it. By default, HTML ignores white space and puts a single space between elements. The pre tag, however, maintains the original white space. Usually the pre tag displays using a fixed width font, such as courier, the typewriter font, and sometimes without any word wrap function. Coupled with the ability to maintain the original white space, the tag is often used for displaying computer code, though there is a specific HTML tag called code for that purpose. In practice, the reason your theme styles each heading differently is to help visitors see the relationships between headings. The numbers 1 through 6 are derived from the HTML tags H1, H2, and so on. Heading 1 is meant to be the most important on a page, or as of HTML5, the most important within an HTML section. Heading 2 is less important, and so on down the line. And the term heading is also important here. It means a word or short phrase. A series of two sentences is not a heading. 
Headings introduce and mark out groups of paragraphs and other content. I finish here the video, if you like the video, subscribe for more video. Thanks and see you soon in the next videos.